welcome to another Code Without Code tutorial. Uh, we're a premium marketplace for automation jobs and courses. So today we're just going to cover what a dynamic advanced field is and how to actually make your attributes change. So if an order comes through and you want to allocate product A to group B and product C to group A, I'm going to show you how you can do that in Zapier. So overall, the concept is, just like I said before, you have a trigger coming out of, say, WooCommerce or from Shopify or a PayPal order or a Stripe order. And inside that, it lists the product that the person was interested in or potentially the thing they selected. Then on the other side, what you're trying to do is then add them into a list or add them into a a, uh, another tool and you're trying to apply a tag or a group or a segment to um, when it's product A it's group 1, when it's product B it's group 2, when it's product C it's group 3. And typically if you build out this workflow in Zapier every time an order goes through it's gonna have to be group 1 or every time an order goes through it's gonna have to be group 2. It doesn't dynamically change. So what we can do is we can actually use essentially a lookup table that sits in the middle. It's going to take the input and then match it to what the correct output is. You don't have to use Google Sheets to do this. You could use something different such as a lookup table inside Zapier under the utilities. But we're going to use Google Sheets. The reason why I like using Google Sheets is it makes it very easy to change and it's very scalable. So if you get more products getting added in, you can just increase the input column and then match them with the output. And anyone can do it. You don't even need to go into Zapier to actually do this. So it's a good way and it's good practice if you're looking up pricing or doing something like that to do it in a Google Sheet. So what we need to do is we need to set up this Google Sheet with the input and the outputs and then product A, product B, product C. What we're essentially going to do is we're going to tell Zapier to take that, that value and then do a lookup of the A column and try to find the matching equivalent value, which will then return the entire row, giving us the opportunity to take group four and then feed it back into our tool. But in order to do this in Zapier, what you actually need to do, and I've done this as an example, is I've pulled through a test through my WooCommerce account, and you can see that I'm going to start using the, the SKU. However, you could do this with the tags, you could do it with a category. So if you had a category of products and you always wanted them to be added to a specific category in, say, MailChimp, you can use this process. But for us, we're just going to use the SKU. Once we've done that, we'll go in and we'll create a new action inside Zapier. And that action isn't create, it's actually search. So what we do is we select the spreadsheet that we've saved, we select the worksheet, we type in what, or we select from the drop down what the column is, and then we feed through that input from the first step. So the SKU feeds in to here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run the test and when we click on the test we're actually going to return every single column that appears in that workflow okay so it'll look like this and we're going to return widget group 4 it'll also tell us the row for this purpose it's not too important but it is something you can do so now we've received group 4 and now we need to add it in to the tool that we want to use now, in most cases, you'll just be able to take group four and feed it directly in. However, in the case of MailChimp, when I roll, went through and tried to allocate uh, it in my list, it wasn't as simple as just group four. Notice that group four here is not actually formatted the same way as it is here. So you look for this little text here and this is the format you need to use. In some cases, it's going to be words, but other times it's actually numbers. So now, if I was to feed group four into this section, it wouldn't actually work. And the reason it wouldn't work is I need it to say areas, hyphen, arrow, group four. So in order to get to that point, I've actually got to go back 
and add in a new column called Zapier Output and put in the exact layout that it is expecting. And so now when we're in MailChimp, you'll see that you need to feed it into the group. But you've got this drop-down list, and if you select Group 4 now, it's actually just going to always allocate it to Group 4. Same with if you select this. So what we actually have to do is we click the down arrow, we scroll down, and we said Use Custom Value. Once you do that, you'll actually get a new section, and in there you can type in the small part here. But once again, we don't want to do that, because that'll make it hard-coded. So we then need to use the response from the lookup. And now this workflow will do a lookup of the order, taking the SKU, going into the Google Sheet, it will take each of the uh, orders, it will go through and it will pull out what the Zapier output is. It will then take the Zapier output and it will feed it back into MailChimp. And it will put it in in a dynamic way. So every time an order comes through, they'll get allocated to the correct group. This same approach can be applied not just to MailChimp, but to Infusionsoft. It could even be applied to Teachable. It could be applied to essentially any tool. All you need to do is identify what that unique attribute is, be it the course, the email list, the segment, the tag, the group, whatever it is. You just need to find what this part is and make sure that that's the entry that you enter into your column for the lookup.